Good morning, everyone. My apologies for what looked like a heavenly halo around my head. I have not been elevated into sainthood at all. I'm just trying to move over this way so it doesn't look like a halo around my head. But I want to begin this morning by offering a, a fable, a tale of three men all on their own individual journeys. The, the first man, as he walked, he realised he was getting weary. It was a hot day and he felt he needed a rest. So eventually he came across a tree, nice and shaded, so he settled down to have his rest. And as he settled, he began just to doze off and to go to sleep. He was woken up when an apple fell out of the tree and hit him on the head. And then a few minutes, and so he took the apple, realised that he was feeling hungry, and he began to eat it. And a few minutes later, the second man came along, also seeing the tree and seeing the man eating the apple he came and he stood under the tree and he he looked up at it and just kept watching it the first man said if you want an apple reach up and get one the trees aren't all that high you can reach and he said no no I believe that if I stand here long enough, the tree will decide itself to give me an apple. Yeah, well, the third man came along and he saw the apple tree. He reached up, he took an apple, and then he reached up and he took a second one. And he began to move away. And the man sitting on the ground shouted, Hey, why don't you come and sit with me? We can enjoy the apples together. And the third man said, No. I've been told that these are the best apples in the whole area. And my son is sick. So I come to get him an apple so he can gain nourishment from the fruit. And off he went. Eventually, as the first man began to finish his apple, he noticed the second man was now reaching up and taking an apple himself. And he said, oh, I see you've chosen not to wait after all. And eventually the man turned his gears from the tree and he polished the apple on his garment and said, well, as I waited, I grew very hungry. And the more hungry I grew, the less willing I found myself to eat. Besides, I knew the tree wouldn't mind after all. Doesn't the tree live to bear fruit? To anyone who comes to feed from it. A strange sort of story, but nevertheless, the truth upon it. Well, in today's readings, we've actually got two accounts of the purpose of creation, but especially in the Ezekiel account about trees. I love trees. I'm not so fond of motorbikes going past my house in the middle of this. But I love trees, especially a solitary tree in a field by itself. There's just something about them. There's one near Reverend Stella's house. And whenever I've gone to visit, I tend to pull off the road 
I stop and I admire this tree on a hillside, in a field, overlooking their estate. It stands there all by itself, it's majestic and yet ordinary at the same time. Well, in today's readings, we're reminded not only of trees, but of life itself. Most of us will know that scripture begins and ends with a tree. It's hugely significant that. Genesis, the tree of life in the Garden of Eden, reminds us of the journey that we were all on. A journey set in the paradise that God created. We're spoilt by our actions, by our words, by our thoughts, by our selfishness in so many ways. And then after Genesis, Scripture takes us all the way through various prophets who all point the way to God. But our human self-centeredness prevents us from following. And don't we see that self-centeredness as we think about the creation around us and the way in which we can play our part in spoiling it? Single-use plastics polluting our seas, chimneys polluting our skies, are all destroying the creation around us. The creation that begins in Genesis. But eventually we see scripture ending with the tree of life again. But now this time in a restored Eden where everything is as God intended it to be. And what's changed between Genesis and Revelation? Well most of us will know the answer to that one. And I think it's contained again in another piece of wood. As Jesus hung on a cross, hewn out of a tree, the thief next to him spoke of fear. Remember me when you come into the kingdom. And Jesus didn't reply, tough, you're too late. You should have sought me out earlier. No, his words must have been like honey to the dying man. But Jesus said, Truly, this day you will be with me in paradise. We can think of the, the scripture as being three trees, Genesis, Revelation. But truly the cross on which the thief died was the tree of life to that criminal. For it was here that he recognised the connection between the first tree and the second tree, Jesus himself. And it's our acceptance of Jesus as our Lord and our Saviour that will usher in the completed creation when the pain, the difficulty, the tragedy and the suffering of the world's current existence will end. It's through Jesus that God takes his true vision of creation and re-establishes it in the way he wants it to be. But where do we stand on this? This weekend we've got the G7 summit where climate change is yet again on the cards. You know, we debate the meaning of the two trees in scripture. We don't deal with part of the solution to the issue, which is our responsibility to restore God's creation. And ultimately, we don't remember that it's God who will lead us from the Genesis tree to the tree of Revelation. Genesis 3, I will remind us of humanity's pride and arrogance to the tree in Revelation. Our reminder of God's grace. Grace so often an acronym 
that God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. It is Christ who connects the two trees by his death upon the cross. And in Christ we are being offered that grace which is life itself. For Christ said, I have come to give you life, life in all its fullness, not life with bitterness, not life with selfishness, not life alone, because he walks along with us. That's the grace of God in action. And you and I are called to embody that grace. You and I are called to live out that grace by the way we treat other people. We are offered the grace of God for that life itself to us. And today I just want to urge people, if you haven't fully accepted the grace that Jesus offers, or if you have accepted that grace, have you given true thanks for it? And if not, then maybe now is the time to do so. And maybe now is the time for us to go from our little cocoon shells in church to share with others the story of the two trees and the cross which connects them. For that's the commission that Jesus has given to us all. Go and tell the world. And the more we tell the story of Jesus, the closer we get to that second tree. Amen. And a moment of quiet.